some time ago, well, a few months ago at least, um, I have been playing Dungeons and Dragons with some friends, and we haven't played in a while. And some time ago, uh, I wanted, I decided to make a box to store all my books and all the papers and everything, character sheets for everybody, because they'd come over once a week, and uh, I didn't want them to have to worry about forgetting to bring their stuff. So I uh, put together a box out of some poplar. I bought some project boards from Lowe's, and this is half inch, and um, just kind of put it together. Um, I built this bottom plate, basically glued it together. I didn't have my jointer jig at the time, and so it's just kind of there. Um, it actually turned out really well, though. And then for the lid, I did the same thing. I just tried to carefully table saw this um, so that you can see the joint there because it's just not that good. It's right here. Um, I tried to table saw this, and it actually did pretty good. I mean, that's the joint. Um, but I can do a lot better now. The problem was, is that, well, the problem is, uh, one of my friends, her name's Erin Louay, I know her through my wife, she painted this custom cover for me on the front. And so I don't want to um, pull this apart and rejoint it and re-glue it because it'll ruin this picture. So instead what we're going to do is just put it together. I'm going to sand it and put it together uh, and stain it. So that's what we're going to do today. So that should be my workbench. Hopefully this doesn't freak out. It doesn't look like it will, so that's good. Um, so what I want to do, first of all, um, the edges of this are basically flush with the box. Uh, I built it that way, so these edges are flush. This back edge should be flush. But it leaves a little bit of a lip on the front. Um, I just don't know. Yeah. Okay, you can totally see that. So the problem is, is that these edges are really sharp. And so I need to just break them somehow. Um, so I think I'm just going to get some sandpaper and sand it down a little bit. Just these edges to make it so they're just not, you know, super sharp uh, poplar edges. Especially these corners. Um, and I've got some cool little hinges that I bought. and a latch. So this is the latch. So that's what that looks like. It just goes over this tiny little, little hook. Let's see if I can find a, a hinge. I had them all in here so that I wouldn't lose them. <laughs> so, oh well. They're in here somewhere. I'll find them eventually. Oh, here they are. They're in a bag. This is what one of the hinges looks like. So that's kind of neat. If it comes with little screws and things too. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna sand this really quick. Just get those edges down so they're not super sharp. And then uh, I'm gonna stain it. I'm actually still a little bit on the fence on the color to use for stain because um, I just haven't decided yet, I guess. When I'm done, I've got some uh, bar. Well, I'll just show you. I got a box. Basically, just epoxy. That's what it looks like. It's probably backwards because it's using the front facing camera, but it's Parks Super Glaze Pour on Finish. Um, it's a two part substance. So you basically. Uh, mix a one-to-one -one ratio of part A and part B together and it makes this clear glaze and then you just pour it on whatever you want to be glazy. So I'm tempted to use that on this. Um, I want, I'm going to use that on my, my desk um, in any case you don't know. Well, I can't get that off easily. But the desk is, it's over there. Um, I, I'm going to do that glaze as part of the desk, but I wanted to at least have the lid ready so that I could glaze the lid 
with any extra glaze that I have. So I'm going to just sand these edges down real quick and stain it. And then we'll be ready. And I've got a different block. I'll just use this. It's the same. same feels much better. So I want to just get these corners too. And you can see a small line right there where, so she masked this whole piece of wood off, but there must have been a small gap in the masking. So we'll just sand that off. That won't be a, a big deal. Overall, I'm super excited about this. One thing I like about making my own stuff is it's one of a kind. There's nothing else like it in the world. I can't go to the store and buy something like this. And uh, the box itself is handmade, but also, I mean, this is hand painted. So, yeah, you're just not going to be able to go out and find something like this anywhere. So, part of what's so cool about making stuff. That being said, if you make crappy stuff, yeah, there won't be anything else out there like it either, but nobody will care. <laughs> so, I'm not very good at this yet, but I try and do my best. Now this sandpaper, let me just check it, I think this is a 150. Code 236. I don't know what that even means. This is definitely not a 250. It's too coarse. It's probably a hundred. It's, it's removing material pretty easily. All right, let me show you the difference here. So this. Let's see if the camera can see it. That's an unbroken edge, and it's pretty sharp. I can almost get slivers if I, well, maybe not, but it's, it's pretty sharp. I wouldn't want to bump any of these corners, so that would kind of hurt. That's a broken edge. That's what I just did. So it's kind of beveled a little bit. It feels a lot smoother. <laughs> Looks a lot nicer, too. I really like that. So I'm just going to make that kind of an edge all the way around. Where did we leave off? Right here. I've seen people on YouTube use a planer to do this, just a really tiny planer. But that's, I, I feel like that would be too aggressive for this. So I think we'll just do this. I need to get, probably before I buy anything else, I need to get 
a dust collection system really bad. Um, this is getting crazy. I'm worried I'm going to get lung cancer or something. I must have standed this the first time with like a 60 grit because this is a much smoother finish than this over here. I might want to sand this whole thing again. I have to be careful because I don't want to ruin this. I thought that I sanded this really well before I gave it to her. I must not have used very good sandpaper. It must have been like a 60 grit or something. so nervous about scratching that. I think I nicked a couple places here on the edge already. <sighs> if I mask it off, it might help a little bit. I'm just worried that this will just go under the masking anyway and give me a false sense of security. Let's keep going. Do the best we can. Seeing pink flecks show up in my sawdust, and I know I hit the paint. After I get dust collection, I have to get a vise. Oh man. I did shoulders yesterday at the gym and my arms are still really sore. I sanded that pretty good because I had that little joint there. So this is putty to fill that gap. There's a little bit of a gap on the end. Let's see if I can minimize that. Brush. Brush all this off. Where's my brush?
side sanded really well. Oh, I got a little bit of paint there too. Let's get that really quick. Isn't that a cool knot right there? That's such a cool knot. not get any of this on my sweater. Alright. So these are the colors I've got. got our favorite, Ebony. I've also got this other stuff called Jacobine, which has a little more red in it. It's not as dark. Um, I've never used it on poplar before, so I honestly don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, I've got another kind called Special Walnut. Let me show you these two, actually. So this one's Special Walnut. This is what almost everything that I see made out of oak is stained something like this color. I see that everywhere. And then there's this stuff I've used once. Um, it's kind of a red stain. I've, I don't know, it's red. So, I'm a huge fan of that. I might go with ebony again. I might do the back just to see what it looks like. Let's do that. my special walnut. There's probably some framer out there that sees me opening my staining cans with this thing. It shudders every time I do it. There actually isn't a framer out there because nobody watches my videos, so I'll do whatever I want. I don't have to worry about anybody. Should have shook that up first. Let's do that first. Okay, I think that's on there. I 
thought I had one of these that was almost empty. Chris, in fact, yeah, here it is. Yeah, this one almost empty. I'll use this one instead. Oh, I should probably shake this one up too. <clears throat> oh, did I? I think I did. Oh, I'm glad I found this. I bet you that that's ebony on Poplar. I bet that that's the Jacobine. And that's what the red cherry looks like. That actually turned out really well. Huh. I wonder what that was. Hmm. <laughs> well, just to be sure, I'm going to put some ebony on this side. I don't remember if I used the pre-stain with this piece or not. Probably didn't. Probably good anyway, because I'm out. Good part. Get some stain on there. So this is the ebony. I've been told to go across the grain with stuff like this just because it helps work the stain into the wood better. Um, there's probably somebody else out there that's like, oh, you have to go with the green. So, I'd love to hear the reason. Actually, there is anybody out there. Haha. <laughs> at least not that I know of. Is there anybody watching? Nope. So, haha. <laughs> I don't care. Well, we'll let that sit for a minute. Pretend like we're staining the rest of the box. More. More of it in. Do the edges. And look at it and go, yep, that looks pretty good. And then start whipping it off. Probably about half the time it'll actually take in reality. If only staining was that easy. I'll be really careful with this because it's still wet and it'll stain stuff. That doesn't look too half bad. I think on the front, this part right there. I must not have let it sit very long and I must have wiped it off really fast. Looks like I need to just let it penetrate and it'll look really good actually. I like that. So let's do that. Ebony it is. All right. Should use some pre stain. 
it's generally going on pretty consistently, but there's I need to go over it one more time with a towel to make sure I even everything out. I think I'm going to leave the edges for now. This is going to look really boring. I'm going to try and do the front. A little bit of dust still. All right. That's right, I'm living on the edge, literally. I'm going to try and get that piece of wood right there. Probably watching this and going, why didn't you just stand it before you gave it to her? Um, well, she's busy. And I can't just have her wait for me to finish stuff. I have to work on her timeline. And I really, really wanted to have this done. And I was kind of lazy. But yes, that would have been the correct way to do this. The edges a little bit, but we'll be okay. Kind of hoping that the paint will keep this stuff from being weird at all. Hopefully, the paint doesn't absorb this stuff. an option, a decision to make, I guess. Do we leave it this color or do we wipe it off? So this is what the back looks like. Actually, let me I'm just going to let it dry like that.
take a little longer to dry. I think it looks better. Actually, let's get another dab of this. Make sure this doesn't run down the front. Too big of a problem a minute ago when this was pretty dry, but now it's not. Pretty good. I think. All right, now to find a creative way to let this dry. Hmm. Leave it like that, huh? Kind of like that. Okay. Now I'm kind of tempted to try and get in here on these edges of the paint and get this, remove the stain. Uh, I might try and do a very small little piece and see how I do. Out of paper towels. Let's try down here where it's already kind of black. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it kind of works, sort of. Seeing that wrong, but that kind of an effect. That worked really well, actually. All right, neato. Now, for the rest of the box, I've got this stuff. This was something that my cabinet maker left at my house on accident. Um, I don't know if I, if I want to use it or not. Um, kind of interesting, though. Um, maybe for the back. I don't know. I really want to use that epoxy, though, for the top, because I want this stuff. I want this part to be waterproof, keyproof. You know, metal, drop my knife on it, proof, that kind of thing. I don't want that ever to get scratched or anything. So, I think we'll do that. Let's put these away since we're done with the sandpaper. Q 
case you're watching this later, if you saw my other video where I polished that metal piece on my desk, these are all the sandpaper pads that I used. So this is a, I don't even know what that is. I think this is a 2000. Yep, it is. So I used three, four, uh, nope, that's a 1500. So three 2000s, two, Two 1500s, actually one 1500, one 1200, one 800, and that's a 250 right there. Let me go all the way to 60. Oh, and this one's a 2000. So four 2000s, holy cow. So this one, you're probably looking at it and going, what's all that black stuff? Well, that's polish, polishing compound. Um, the 2000 just wasn't fine enough to get the, the finish that I wanted. And so I stuck this on the, the sander, got my polishing compound stick, it's this stuff, from Harbor Freight, and just went and let it spin. And it just picked up a bunch of that compound and then I just got it on the metal. And it actually polished. So, woohoo. Good that something called polishing compound does something like that. Uh, when I first tried to use it, it actually scratched it. <laughs> so, put squirrel marks into it. Anyway, okay, now what do we do? Just start epoxying the table. I guess we could do that. Here, I'm gonna stain this later. I'm probably not gonna, I, that'd be really hard to do. I'm probably going to just do a, like a, that satin finish. We'll see, I don't know. Maybe I'll get the, the glaze on there and go, oh, it's so amazingly beautiful. Can't live without it. Right, I got this thing full of water and metal. You want sparkles in my glaze? If so, use this bucket. Those little pieces of steel. Right, let's read the directions for this stuff. first. That's always a good sign. Stuff could screw up your eyes, your skin, your clothing. If you use it for a long time, skin will sensitize to it and hate you. Wash really good after you're done. Use adequate ventilation because it stinks. Don't mist it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that would work well. Sure fresh air entry during application and drying. If you experience eye watering, headache, dizziness, or if air monitoring demonstrates vapor mist levels are above acceptable limits, where appropriate, properly fitted respirator. Don't let it freeze. Okay. Pour at room temperature, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's not going to work. It's like 50 in here. I wonder how long it takes to dry. It will mix for three minutes. It has to cure for four hours. Hmm. I don't know if this is going to happen. It's like, it's got to be at least in the 50s in my garage right now because it is not a warm place to be. So, yeah. Hmm. I wonder how temperature affects this stuff. It probably just doesn't set up very well. It's probably weaker if it's in a colder environment or a hotter environment. Warmer. Sawdust off of this so I don't actually get it in the mix. Another thing is, is that my garage isn't really well ventilated, <laughs> so 
Uh, let's see, what are my options here? I can go turn on the furnace and open the door and let the furnace bake, uh, warm up the garage a little bit. I could just polyurethane the surface of this table. Here, I'm gonna bring this up here. Um, I could polyurethane the table. We could, I don't know, I really like this resin. It's epoxy because it's just strong and durable. There's the desk. So I could turn on the furnace. I don't know if the furnace could keep up with a giant aluminum garage door heat sinking the garage. Uh, I guess I could just put a coat of poly on this first to seal it and then put the epoxy on later. The thing is if I start using my desk I'm probably not going to want to I'm not going to wake up on a Saturday morning and go, boy, you know what would be a good thing to do today? I'm going to undig my desk, get all my computer stuff off of it, and epoxy the, the surface. Yeah. I'm going to be lazy. I really need my desk. I could mix it. I guess I could bring the, the two bottles inside so that they're 70 degrees-ish. Um, mix them in there in a few hours and then bring them in here and hope that it just works and heat the garage a little bit with the furnace I think that's what we'll do I think that's what we're gonna do so I think this video is over bye maybe